Hello everybody, and today we are looking at the PNSO Memenchi or Memenchisaurus. This is a very long-necked uh, sauropod. I think it's related to Barosaurus and Diplodocus. I'm not more closely related to those species. I'm not entirely sure though. Um, I may be just pulling that out of my ass to be perfectly honest with you. But I am more interested to, to be reviewing this fine model we've got here. Now, I will say, just to get the price point out of the way, um, PNSO have started a trend recently that has seen their museum line models uh, become quite expensive for what you get. So, we had, in the past, Nick the Ceratosaurus, which is a huge model, huge, huge model. Um, it's about 50, 55.99. $55.99 from Everything Dinosaur. Uh, and then you have this, which is almost the same price, and it's nowhere near as big. And to be honest, for a sauropod, it should be bigger anyway, uh, which is one of my main gripes of the figure. Um, there are obviously good parts of the figure. You, they don't just you don't just sell a £50 figure for nothing, but I did get it from Everything Dinosaur from $49.99. I think I actually got it for Christmas, but I know that the price—I know the prices of the models anyway. Uh, so there you go. Um, Forty-nine ninety-nine from Everything Dinosaur, about fifty pounds rounds up to. So, well, it does definitely round up to fifty pounds. It's only one pence a part. So there you go. Here is the PNSO Menchisaurus. Let's take a look at the head sculpt first. So this is a weird one for me, and this is one of the things. That really, that really puts me off the figure. I mean, look at that face. Now this looks utterly ridiculous. I think. I mean, it, it may be of decent, like head shape for Barosaurus. Shaking my hand a bit too much here. Uh, a decent shape for Barosaurus in terms of just the structure and everything. Uh, Barosaurus. Is that in Barosaurus? I meant Menchisaurus. But. The bug eye really, really bugs me to not, uh, not, uh, no pun intended there, but it really does not jive with me very much at all because I think, even though I can kind of excuse it because it's, I think this figure is supposed to be based off a juvenile specimen of a Menchisaurus, it still looks, I think, pretty ridiculous compared to PNSO's older Menchisaurus model, which I. Which in some ways I think is better, but I think that the really fine texturing on this figure kind of stands out a lot. And I think that wins over, I think, from the older figure. I think the older figures are slightly too over-textured. Um, but I don't know, that's just my opinion. And of course we have some teeth here. You could see that the ever so slightly separated and you can kind of make it out a little bit. The teeth are separated a little bit, but to be honest, it just likes, it just looks like someone got a little white felt tip and just drew a, a white smile on it. To be honest, it doesn't look that great. If I'm honest, I think, I think the eye really spoils the head sculpt. To be honest with you, but overall, the head sculpt has got some nice detail in it. It got some. If I can get a better lighting on this, maybe if I put the figure down. Hang on. And actually turn the light on that would be better uh yeah we have we have some nice details on the face as you can see you've got the creases just you've got a slight crease where the uh jaw starts and you could slightly see the fenestra there the uh, outline of the fenestra but not quite and you've got a nice bit of bone on top of the eye and of course the same applies to the other side a bit of bone there and there's a little crease where there's some muscular definition on the cheeks and then running down the neck you can really see there's some muscular definition going on and it's a long long neck as i said mentosaurus was known is really known for its long neck a really long long neck but you that muscular definition really sets it apart i think looks pretty good and we've got some osteoderms at the base of the neck there and the same goes for this side as well i think this side's actually more impressive 
you can see you've got some really nice muscular definition on that and it's not like it's it just looks like some sort of it doesn't it, to be honest the way i'm filming it really makes the neck look like it's got too many creases in it and if i'm honest i'm not sure if that's like me subconsciously making an, ob an objection to how how much muscle tension they put in the neck but if I maybe if I, I can capture it a little bit better if I kind of circle around a little bit you can really see that it's a bit more circular than one might think it's not like it's deeply set in the neck or anything the muscle muscle tension but there is definitely some there you have some really nice detailed creases along the neck here and then especially going down to the kind of chest area you could see in, and you have some really nice muscular definition on the legs and then you've got that classic uh kind of toe on the sauropod there again some really nice osteoderms going along the back really nice uh kind of it's not really a spike it's nothing too extravagant but it's some nice uh, spinal definition going around the down the spinal ridge. It doesn't go all the way down to the tip of the tail, but it's still there. And I really like that detail in the figure. It just makes it look a bit more natural and a bit more, uh, just stand out a bit more. And some really nice detail all along the body with the creases. And you got some osteoderms and some kind of regimented patterns here. That's something I might have changed about the figure. Just make it a bit uh, the the osteoderm patterns a little bit more scattered um because they do look a bit red too regimented on this figure um the paint scheme is quite very simple as with a lot of pnso figures not all of them but some of them um you have like a a bluish gray almost going down to uh how would i say like a much lighter gray um for the counter shading on the belly there and there's a really nice fading in it to that lighter gray and when we go down to this hind leg here you can see that there's some really nice um skin stretching and same i think is on the other side here some really nice skin stretching here on the mengisaurus and some really nice muscular definition and creases on that hind leg as well because as you could see it's kind of leaning on that leg to walk so you, you can really see that muscular definition and the same goes for this tail as well you got some nice muscular definition as well not too much not as much as the neck but it is really good to see that muscular definition and of course some more awesome creases folds and wrinkles there and the tail gets very thin as we go down it's actually got a little club on the end of it which surprised me a lot i did not know that about about mementosaurus i did not know that it was supposed to have if i can get that back in focus maybe if i yeah, I did not know that it was supposed to have a little club. Um, so that's really interesting to note. And of course, the end of the tail is a little bit bendy. So you just got to be careful with that. But I think actually it'd be more likely to break if it was hard. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right, so let's have a look at the feet because I didn't look at those too much, did I? Of course, we've got that classic... Uh, those large toes on the front feet of the Diplodo uh, Diplodocus. What am I talking about? Mementisaurus. Uh, and we've got some really nice paint going on with the toes there. It really separates from the from that dark grey, which is nice. Uh, you know, I have massive gripes with other uh, mo toy models that don't actually set the toe uh, nails or the claws apart from the the paint on the actual legs. So. Yeah, I'm really glad they decided to make that more apparent here. Give the toes more definition. I really like that part. So yeah, this figure is well painted, well detailed. Uh, and it did come with some... Uh, those classic PNSO museum line posters. Which of course, not everyone likes, not everyone wants them uh, in fact i'm pretty sure most of the community dinosaur collecting community doesn't want them but i take advantage of them when i do buy a museum line figure i have got all my pnso uh mementosaurus posters up 
and I'll show you them right here. So we've got the uh, one, with, I think that's a Tarbosaurus, I'm really not sure what that's supposed to be, uh, that theropod there, but you've got the Mementisaurus up there, and you've got like a nice real life uh, rendering of it, and then you've got some size comparisons of the different species of Mementisaurus compared with a car and a human, and then you've got some really nice artwork there of Mementisaurus header. That, that bottom one there is my favourite by far out of all of them, and then there's some more artwork there. Very really nice uh, kind of horizon there on that artwork at the top. So yeah, that is the Pianosoma Mentisaurus. <sighs> Main gripes with this figure are, one, the eye is ridiculous. Two, um, it's too small for a sauropod. Uh, three, they need to reduce the price if they're going to make the size this small and then include the posters as well. Um, it would be better i guess if they didn't include the posters and then made the price smaller uh but to be honest i would rather it just be bigger because when we're looking for pnso sauropods and we, and we know that pso deliver that deliver that scientific accuracy i want to have a big sauropod model so yeah that will be that'll be my gripes for this figure but the detail and the paint is excellent really nice muscular uh and skin definition on this sauropod really captures that look of a mangisaurus that really really long neck that really long look of it and of course that n that new kind of posture that i think my mangisaurus is found to have um that is not necessarily like going upward but kind of slightly diagonal upward not just straight up or straight straight horizontal so it really catches that long look of Mementisaurus. And if you're looking for a, a decent sauropod figure, I would recommend it. But just be wary of the price. Because it is $49.19 out of everything dinosaur. And it is one of the more expensive PNSO models. For what it is, it is, it is expensive. But it's a good figure. I really like it. I would recommend it. Just be wary of that price. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I did actually forget to do some size comparisons. Silly, silly me. Let me just get the Papo Brachiosaurus. So here it is with the Papo Brachiosaurus, if I can fit that in. You can see that it's actually nowhere near as big as the Papo Brachiosaurus. It's actually quite small. So that's the Papo Brachiosaurus. And... Let me get the PNSO Wilson T-Rex. So as you can see, it's even less bulky than Wilson. I mean, this is a small sauropod figure. It really is. But again, I think it's supposed to be a juvenile, best not a juvenile specimen. So, you know, who can really, who can really blame them, I guess. But it's a bit disappointing. It's a bit disappointing. So yeah, there is Wilson. Thank you very much for watching, guys. And I'll see you in the next video. Um, I think I will be reviewing one of my marine animals, prehistoric marine animals next time. So that should be a bit different. But yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching.